It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are maker. So we're back in, um, let's say, our dirty room. So what we've started building in here, guys, we're actually getting limited for space. We've got so many builds on the go. So Sam has been locked away in this room, in his own little shed, if you like, and he's been super busy plumbing in our fuel system. This car here belongs to Andrew, good client of ours, and Sam has been very busy. So we're getting the looms in, we're getting the fuel pressure lines in. And if you look down this side, Ben, you'll notice. So we've, we've been trying to find the best route. So, you know, every time we do this, we try and improve. So we've ran the lines across the top of the transmission. Normally we used to go along the transmission, sorry, along the chassis leg and we'd normally cut across. But as you can see guys, there's a lot of exhaust components in here and a lot of heat. And these engines run at nearly 100 degrees. So those exhausts are pumping heat out. So we're trying to improve how we set our looms out. So using the best braid, the best heat protection. And we've decided now that we're actually gonna mount our looms in ECU underneath the bottom of the seat box. Out of harm's way, out of splash resistance, we're gonna make a lovely shield to protect it from other debris, things like grease off the prop shafts, etc. But most of all, we're just trying to improve guys, functionality and serviceability. So if there's ever an issue, you can get to things like the fuel filter, the fuel pump, as you can see there. But we're also trying to, think out the box you know how can we make these things better and how can we improve every single build that we do so there you have it Going through the packaging for the wiring loom for the LT1 swap into the chassis. This is the chassis we took to the show, um, the Rover Social show. So I've done the fuel lines, laid the fuel lines on the chassis, run them up to the front with a regulator that's so ready to go on the bulkhead and the sensor that needs to be in there. The plug for the sensors here, uh, it needs to be over there. So I've got a route it with with the rest of the route with the rest of the loom um back to the front keep it neat and tidy and out of the way so that that's one there's a couple of others that need to go to the front like the uh, accelerator pedal position that's going to go over there obviously so i need to route that somewhere where we can get access to it um I uh, also got the OBD socket, so obviously we want that. Um, I'm going to send that as well, I'll send that up through the tunnel and put it next to the original one. Um, I mean, by rights, I can just cut this one off and put it into the original one. So there's no difference between the plugs the same. I just changed where, where the pins live and then your original OBD socket is your OBD socket for, for this, no different. Um, the fuse box for the entire engine is here. That's it, that's all, that's all it needs. And the, and the gearbox, um, relays for the fans and for the fuel pump. This is the plug for the um, pulse width modulation module which is for the fuel pump. So uh, it regulates the flow to the pump basically. Uh, so it doesn't pump more than it needs to. And when it does need to, it's, it's immediate, it's straight there. So it means that when you cruise in down a motorway and you don't, you don't need that much fuel, it'll turn the pump down so it's not as noisy and you're not circulating as much fuel, which means you're not wasting as much. And then, yeah, and then it's just adding the, the the factory loom back into it, obviously the body harness and all that's the same why we still need the lights to work and everything. So, you know, what, what we do need of the original stuff is still here. 
Um, obviously, a lot of the power lines, like one for the starter motor, needs to be a bit bigger because these take a bit more to turn over. So that needs to be bigger. Um, the power supply for the fuel pump. Um, so f f from here back is perfectly adequate. Um, however, the power supply going to that for the fuel pump needs to be just as adequate, if not more. Um, also, I need to run, because this is an automatic, automatics need to know that you've put your foot on the brake. Now, there is a wire specifically for that job somewhere in here, um, one of these. So when you press your foot on the brake, um, there's a circuit that's closed that turns your lights on. Well, at the same time, we're going to use it to tell the brain that you've put your foot on the brake. Now, what that does is, it, let's say you were flat down and hard accelerating and your torque converter was locked, so you were getting no slip. It was a complete one-to-one -one between the engine and the and the, the output basically, then when you, if you had to come on the brake, you want that to unlock immediately so it's not pushing you forward. So that's what that's, what that's for. Um, it also changes, like when you take your foot off the brake, like you think when you put it into drive, you take your foot off the brake and it slowly pushes you forward. It needs to know it for that. Um, we've got a spare tachometer signal here, which we can use. I believe this is having um, a decoded digital dash, so I can literally just put this wire straight into it, and that's that. Um, what else is there? And the signal to the start a solenoid. So this is what closes the solenoid that then starts the engine. So if we wanted to have uh, like a push button start or whatever, that's the wire we'd use for that. Um, we're not going to use it because we're keeping it on the key and on the barrel so it'll be wired appropriately to stay on the barrel. And that's it really, essentially. The challenge has been finding space for all the, the computers and the modules because there's one, there's one extra one with this setup, which is the one for the fuel pump. It's not crazy big, but it needs to be somewhere appropriate. It needs to be protected from heat in the environment. And it needs to make sure that we've got enough length on the cables to be not overly straining anything. And that we've got a little bit of headroom for strain relief, just because things do move and it, you know, it rattles around and you need to have a bit of room, buffer space when it comes to wires. Cause you don't, these, these wires and the pins and the plugs are tiny. You know, and, and the retainer on the plug is only plastic, so if something really did yank it, it would just tear this straight away. And all this stuff is only as good as the wires that connect it together, so it needs to be it's paramount that they're secure. And then, um, so I'm going to have to mount some of this control stuff because you need access to this really. You know, like if a fuse goes for whatever reason or something, you want it to be convenient to be able to check it. So. You know, where your factory battery is and that, you've got good access here with a, a clip, it's under your seat. If you've got pull-up seats, it's, it's dead easy to get to, so it makes sense to put it in there. Now, I'd like to put it in this side where the other fuse box is and all the other relays. Um, however, there's not enough room. So, in order to not make it cramped and difficult to work on, I'm going to put it where there is room. Um, and the room where the bottle jack and that goes, there's, there's plenty of room in there. And there's all the, all the factory clips for holding all the, the loom up and everything. Um, which again, I mean, they're not, they're not super structural, but they offer support nonetheless. Yeah, and that's it really. It's a pretty straightforward process. It's just uh, got to be prudent. Smart. Yeah. Then what's the next step in the build once you've actually found um, room for all the wires? So yeah. um, once I've sectioned the wires out so they like they're they're comfortable where they are, if you like. Like as they are, I've had to turn it to get it to go where I want it to be, and that's strained it from how it was originally designed. It was originally designed to be branches and limbs. Um, 
So where this branch is, you imagine how a limb comes out of a tree. It's, it's supported before and after the branch. And then it's separated into three for the ECU and one for the gearbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip the ties that dictate which way they come out of the branch and just take the strain away from where I've had to redirect it and then re-secure it so that it's not straining it basically. So that's what I'll do now and then I just need to prep this box for, um, I'm never going to be able to get all this through that hole and even if I could by magic it's not quite big enough to accommodate the area of the wires that are going in so I need to enlarge it um, to the size of our next boot which I know is enough for this and then I can um, deep in the fuse box pull, push all the wires through put all the plugs back together make sure they're secure and fastened put the boot in the hole and then it's just the big power cables and a couple of little wires and then um, I got a canvas interface that I need to put somewhere um, and to run the canvas wires I'll need putting through the dash um, because we're keeping these as they are intact just so that everything's reversible without you know doing irreparable damage or modification so I can I can tap into it there where it comes in um, there's a number of ways of doing it and then and then and then it'll be the marriage put the body on bolt the body down um yeah and then it'll just it's just a case of fixing everything to where it's forever home is going to be and then bolt this up to the bulkhead um i've removed the abs already i've removed the clutch pedal already doesn't need one um, and then it'll be the AC lines will be need need to be fabricated then, and then and then everything else is just the bits and bobs that put put the rest of it back together. Um, but essentially, once I've put these wires on and the the battery cables and put some fuel in it, it it'll start and it'll drive, run and drive. But you would have seen me driving that blue one around like. A chassis and a bulkhead and a seat and that's it like essentially that is holds everything that makes it go and stop is is there on the floor now that's just the bit you sit in